Well, hello. So, this is our video about 4B, standard 4B, explaining homeostasis and the transport of molecules. Homeostasis, let's remember, is balance, and transport is how we get molecules from one side of a cell membrane to the other. How we maintain that balance, we're going to be talking about two types of transport, passive and active, but before we get into that fun shenanigan, we need to first go over the cell membrane because this is the key to us understanding homeostasis and these types of transport. This is a model of the cell membrane. The cell membrane is made of phospholipids. So like this is a reason we need fat in our body because literally every single one of our cells is like is surrounded by fat. This is one phospholipid. Okay, it is made up of a phosphate head and a fatty acid tail. Phosphate head is polar, that means that it likes water. Fatty acid tail is nonpolar meaning that it does not like water. No water. This is like, we know that oils are fast if you try to mix oil and water, like it doesn't. It doesn't happen. That means that oil is nonpolar. Doesn't like water. No, no. Bye bye. Alright, so the cell membrane, the function of a cell membrane is to control what enters and exits the cell. We call this selectively permeable. That means that we, like the cell membrane, is selective about what permeates it, what goes through. Basic components, we have a phospholipid. There is two layers, that's why we call it a phospholipid by, by layer, can't spell bilayer and then these things right in here are just proteins that sometimes help us out. Alright, we have passive transport. I'm, I gave you all of the things here that you need to know. I'm not going to go over all of it, just like the key points. Passive transport means that I am not using energy and I'm going high to low. There are three types. There's diffusion, osmosis, and facilitated diffusion. Diffusion is any particle. Osmosis is just referring to water. And facilitated diffusion is, means that I am using a protein, like this. Active transport means that I am using energy, and I may be going from a low concentration to a high. There are three types, endocytosis, exocytosis, and a protein pump. Endocytosis, you guessed it, is when I'm bringing super large particles into the cell that can't pass through the membrane by itself. Exocytosis is the opposite. Big molecules that can't just leave, they need extra help, extra energy. Protein pump, I'm still using a protein pump, but the difference between this and facilitated diffusion is that my molecules are going from a low concentration to a high concentration because it's active. On the right, we see your favorite things, hypertonic, isotonic, and hypotonic. These literally just refer to, here, I'm going to draw a line here. Okay. This is just osmosis. Okay. There are three types of solutions that we've talked about in osmosis. Hypertonic, which means that we have more water leaving the cell, so my cell shrinks. Isotonic, which means that we have the same amount of water entering and exiting, so nothing changes, it stays the same. And hypotonic, where I have a lot of water coming in, so my cell swells and could even burst, rupture, all those words. Let's look down here. Okay, a cell is 3% glucose. Glucose is sugar and it is placed in a solution with 20% glucose. Okay, that means I need to draw one of these really lovely things. Cell, cell has 3% glucose 
and then the solution has 20% glucose. Basically, like, what's going to happen? Well, the first thing I need to do is figure out, okay, it gave me sugar or the glucose level, but what about my water? That's how I determine it. So what I need to do, given you're only doing this because it gave us the sugar first, is I need to figure out how much water. If there's 3% glucose, then it's going to be 97% water. On the outside, if it's 20% glucose, you guessed it, it's 80% water. Alright, I know that water always moves from high to low water always moves from high to low. What's my higher number of water? That's 97% that's inside the cell. My lower number of water is 80% that's outside. That means that my water is leaving the cell. When I looked up, the one that water was leaving the cell was hypertonic. That means that my cell is going to shrink. My answer is going to be B. A smart thing to do would be to annotate all of these answer choices with what we did right up here. It is your turn. Go with the practice questions, annotate like we just went over, and have a wonderful time.